What's up YouTube, it's Adam from I'm a Music Mogul, and uh, today I'm going to be talking about, actually first off, happy iPad 2 day, because today is the launch day of the iPad 2, and uh, if some of you are getting it, let me know how it is, because I'm still in the, uh, I'm not really sure if I want to get the iPad 2 right here, as you see right here, this is the iPad 1. I don't know if I want to get the iPad 2 yet because uh, iPad 1 is just doing me just fine. And uh, thankfully for Apple, they allowed GarageBand, which I'm going to be showing you today. Uh, GarageBand is able to be loaded onto the iPad 1, so you could use GarageBand to its full extent on the iPad 1. If for the people out there as iPad 1, you guys can use GarageBand as I'm going to show you right now. I just want to show you GarageBand because this is a tutorial, uh, sorry, this is a YouTube channel about music and music programs. I want to show you GarageBand on the iPad. Now, I really do feel that this is uh, does revolutionize the way people make music. Is it going to be your go-to DAW? Probably not. Is it going to be like a sort of fun, make some songs on it and then maybe transport it to uh, Logic or GarageBand? Probably. Now, granted, I don't use GarageBand. I only use Logic, as you all may know. But uh, I figured I'm going to give the GarageBand for the iPad a shot just to see how the touch instruments feel and just to see how it feels playing some of the stuff that I saw back on March 2nd when they did the keynote. So I'm going to go ahead and show you right now what happens uh, all about the GarageBand in, um, on the iPad 1. So when you load up um, GarageBand on your iPad, you get this screen right here. Basically, you can choose between your instruments. So I'm just going to go through, I'm not going to, this is actually one of my first times I'm opening the program. I didn't really, I only spent maybe five minutes with the program already. So I'm just going to go through the instruments, show you what kind of sounds you can make with it. And, uh, and then for another video, I'll make other videos about making songs and maybe tutorials on how to use the program. Because right now I'm kind of confused a little bit of how to use this program because I didn't spend too much time in it, but let's get right into it. So the first thing I'm going to show you is the keyboard, which is uh, your pianos, your organs, your synths. So I'm going to go ahead and open that up. So as you can see, there's a little bit of a low time on the iPad 1, but it's not too much. And I'll just play some stuff for you here. So you can change the velocity over here. Turn sustain on. So that's the sound of the grand piano. So let's quickly switch to a, uh, see how the electric piano sounds like. And I'll show you a couple synths right now. So this is a synth bass right here. And what's actually cool with GarageBand, it does have a built-in arpeggiator. So any of these so sounds on the keyboard, you can arpeggiate. All you have to do is go to the scale over here. Oh, not the scale, this thing right here. Go to arpeggiator, run on, and you can select what you want. A note order, note rate, octave range. So I'm just gonna leave it as what the default settings is and you'll hear what it does. So as you see right there, you can turn easily on our arpeggiator and add any song, add it to any uh, keyboards that you like. So let's go ahead and change this again. Again, this video is just to show you the different sounds that you can make in GarageBand. It's not really a tutorial. It's not really a, a review of the program. It's just to show you what is in the program. Uh, so here's the hyper dance setting. Again, if you want to turn the arpeggiator on, you just go to that little, little dots right there, the mini notes right there, and then you could change what you want. So if I want to change this to an eighth note, you very easily you could just change the arpeggiator setting, hold down the key, and it'll go. So I'll just fil filter through some of the settings right here. If you're wondering, there are some synth pads as well, so you can have uh, Hollywood strings. And 
and the cool thing about this, let me just go back to the piano. The cool thing about the um, about this, the piano, is that you also have this option right here, where it tells you, oh, not that option, the scale. So if you want to know the certain song, the certain key that your song is in, you could go to a major minor scale, and let's say I want a major scale, it will give you the keys that are in that scale or signature. So whatever key I hit is going to be in key with the song that I'm making because all these keys are in the scale of whatever my uh, key of my song is set to. So that's actually really cool for people who don't really know um, the sig the, all the keys and how to stay in key. This will keep you in key by just hitting any key and you'll know for a fact that you are in key with the song and you're not just playing random notes, you are actually hitting notes that is going to be in tune with the song that you're creating under the key signature that you are have set on your song. So let's move on from there. And from there, you can change the size of the keyboard. So if you want a doubled keyboard, you can have it right there. If you want it uh, smaller, you get the point. You can make it any size that you want. You have multiple options to change the size of the keyboard to make it more comfortable for playing on the touch screen because sometimes it does get a little bit uncomfortable, but you get used to it after a while. So I guess you get used to it after a while. So uh, take that off. Let's switch the instruments. So we just go up here to instruments and we can switch it up. And we can go to drums. Now drums is uh, pretty cool. It's You've seen this probably in other apps, but... It's a virtual uh, drum set. It's a virtual drum set and you can change through different uh, kits that it comes with. There's not many kits that comes with it, but uh, hey, it is just the uh, first version of GarageBand for the iPad. So uh, this comes to expected. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the hip-hop kit for the hip-hop kits that actually gives you a uh, pad sort of like an NPC style pads and uh, yeah you get the point it's sort of pads you've seen this on uh, many apps before on the iPad and iPhone so I won't get too much into that so now let's go to uh, if you have a guitar you can plug it in if you have the adapter to get a line input into your iPad you can use the guitar amps and there are quite a few of them actually so you could rotate between them. It's just loading here, and you could lo you could um, just filter through them and see which ones you like. I don't have a guitar at hand here to show you how it works, but uh, just know that they are there. Go back to instruments again. Here is really cool actually on the sampler. So if I go to sampler. You can actually record a live sound and then it'll stretch it out across the board as if you actually sampled it onto a real instrument. So I'm just going to go ahead and record something into the iPad. I'm just going to lift it up because the uh, the microphone is right here. Hello. So right there, I just recorded something. I'm just going to uh, trim it down to my voice. Hello. 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 See right there, you see how cool it is to just record something and then you actually have it stretch out across the whole keyboard and then you can record something to the song. That's actually how hip a lot of hip hop music is made. It's just from a sample and they kind of played out on different um, on different note values. So it's pretty cool that you can do it right there very easily in GarageBand. That actually is a really cool feature that I found in GarageBand so far is that you could just record something and have it sampled across the board right away. Very cool. So Hello. I'm going to move on from that. That is your sampler instrument. Uh, smart drums. I'm not really a fan of the smart drums. I actually like to play out my drums. But for, you, for those of you who don't like to play it out, uh, you could just, basically what smart drums is, you just bring in a thing. The higher it is, the louder it is. The lower it is, the lower the volume is. And uh, wherever you place it, it will have a different rhythm to it. So... So that'll basically create a drum beat for you. GarageBand will automatically create a drum beat for you, uh, determining where, wherever you put these um, the hi hat and all these uh, samples, it will make a beat for you. Or you can just hit this dice right here. Or you could just hit this dice right here, and it will give you a random nice beat. So that could be cool. Go back to the instrument, see what else we have. We have a smart bass. So you've probably seen a lot of this on the Apple site. And 
it's exactly like they show you. Touch strings. You could change it from uh, chords to notes. So you could stretch your like this. This is the first thing I did because I saw them do it in the video and I thought that was pretty cool. So I figured I'd do that. Touch the notes. The more fun thing is bass. Well, yeah, bass is bass, but uh, the more fun thing is uh, guitar. And it really does work. It really does sound really good. I'll show you right now. Sorry, just crashed there. You can hit the uh, hit the chords that you want to hit, or you can just start up or down. So up. kind of strum along with the guitar just by hitting the actual chords itself. Now I didn't really go too much into it, but I guess the way you change the um, what chords are available to you is by changing the key that your song is in. I didn't try that yet, but I'm guessing that's what will change the chords and what you have available to you on this uh, smart guitar. So the smart guitar is really cool. And also you have this autoplay feature. So you can go to autoplay and you can just hit a note or, um, or a chord and it will play it for you. I thought that was pretty cool as well. So that is the smart guitar right there. So as you can see, you could kind of play guitar without actually knowing how to play guitar. And uh, you also have that for the smart keyboard as well. So you actually have your chords laid out on your piano. So if you don't know the chords on your piano or keyboard to play on synth or piano or on an electric piano or on a um, whatever it is, a synth, you have it. Uh, GarageBand on the iPad has your back covered. So you can just go here and again, hit these notes. And you want to lower, lower, if you want it in the lower octave, you just hit lower. You can turn the sustain on. So that's pretty cool. And also it gives you the autoplay feature here as well. On all smart guitars, it gives you smart instruments. It gives you the autoplay feature as well. So that's the smart piano right there. So it's pretty cool. That was a smart keyboard, the smart guitar, the smart bass, smart drums I showed you, the sampler, which is I really like, is really cool, so I showed you that one. And audio recorder, obviously you can use the mic on your uh, iPad to record audio into your session, your garage band session, so that's pretty cool. Uh, guitar amp I showed you, drums I showed you. Yeah, so that's pretty much all the instruments you have right there. Pretty much that's what you're gonna get when you open up GarageBand. You have your keyboards, your synths, your pads, now, granted, I didn't see much of uh, a section to actually make your own synths, but I'm sure maybe there's a way, maybe there isn't. I will let you know in an upcoming video on another tutorial video on this uh, program. And yeah, so until then, if you're thinking of getting it, I'll put the link in the, uh, in the more info section. That is pretty much a brief overview of what kind of sounds, what kind of instruments you get with GarageBand for full... Um, when you download it, that's pretty much what you're going to get and what you can expect from GarageBand. Also, what it comes with is a... Uh, a preloaded song so you could get a what is this here let me just clear this up it comes with a preloaded song so you could kind of get a feel what GarageBand is capable of and that is it for uh, for the little introduction tutorial not really a tutorial but kind of overview of the GarageBand app for the iPad just an overview of what kind of sounds you can expect from it then there are some good sounds in it. The arpeggiation, the arpeggiator feature is really cool. The smart instruments are really cool. I didn't really get enough time to play with it yet, but I'm sure they can really work into your um, into your workflow. The sampler so far is my favorite, favorite, favorite part of the uh, GarageBand right now, but maybe there'll be another feature that I will like in the future. Uh, until then, until I show you another video, more songs, and how to maybe do some stuff on this site, on this DAW, You'll see me then. So, all right, guys, take care. Later. Have fun. You get the iPad 2. Let me know how it is. Let me know if it's a lot faster than what you saw here on the iPad 2 because I'd be interested to know if I should get the iPad 2. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. Later. Take care. Later.